welcome so we were uh, discussing about the uh, electrical breaking of three phase induction motor and as you know there are uh, two methods already i have discussed one is called plugging and uh, uh, plugging we have discussed that is what you do you interchange the supply to terminals indicating that uh, phase sequence applied to a already running motor is suddenly changed and then we discussed how to obtain the breaking torque from torque slip characteristics then we were discussing about dc dynamic braking hmm? and in dc dynamic braking uh, the diagram is here last time so we it is like this that uh, the motor stator is uh, a normal operation of motor you connect it to a three phase supply like this and uh, when you want to break the machine uh, you switch this supply to a dc supply such that uh, at that time at t equal to 0 plus the circuit will look like this that is you inject dc current in the stator and since it was running as a motor uh, 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 steadily at that speed say at a speed nr nr then uh, the machine was running at a slip s equal to ns minus nr by ns which is which means that nr is ns and what is ns ns was 2f by p ns was 2f by p as a motor this was the things prevailing when we suddenly disconnect the ac supply and inject some dc current in the stator winding speed cannot change instantaneously let us try to estimate what will be the breaking torque at t equal to 0 plus so so the moment you switch over to dc the mmf uh, or flux density whatever you call it it will be produced in this direction nidc b will be proportional to this similarly this phase b will be in the opposite direction because current is coming out from this and we get the net mmf which will be produced is 2 nidc into root 3 2 2 will cancel out and this field will be stationary because only dc current is flowing okay however rotor is moving now this thing can be considered to be rotor is stationary this thing can be considered to be rotor stationary and uh, that field which i called stationary is moving in the opposite direction with a speed nr therefore it looks like it is like a, a three phase induction motor uh, which is stationary at s equal to 1 the slip of this machine s equal to 1 and uh, the stator field is moving in the anti clockwise direction with a speed nr now the question is although this field has been created by dc current i know but I can always think that this field has been created by some balanced three phase currents. The frequency of that current then must be P nr by 2 and uh, this nr is nothing but 1 minus s into n s. So, I put it here and I find that okay, the same field is produced as if by a balanced three phase winding frequency of which uh, I, I should only uh, th this frequency equivalent frequency let me write eh? equivalent frequency f is this original ac supply frequency here so in terms of that it comes out to be this so equivalent frequency and uh, it will be moving like this and naturally the torque will be in this direction and uh, and uh, that is what i need because the machine was rotating in this direction 
Now, you have created impose a torque on the shaft which is opposite to the direction of motion therefore, it will decelerate rather quickly that is the whole idea. So, it was like this and DC current is this. Therefore, this uh, stationary field first is being thought of as if it is a rotating field and it is created by the same three phase winding which is supplied with currents whose frequency is this that is what I want to tell. Okay. But now the question is what is the magnitude of that current equivalent RMS current. Strength of the field is known if we recall that it is 3 by 2 suppose number of turns of this machine is n per phase 3 by 2 n and this is I max if you recall our B resultant and this one this should be I max of that imagined uh, three phase supply of frequency f it must be driving a current whose RMS value here I write RMS value of this current uh, value of this current maximum value of this current. will be equal to root 2 times I A C equivalent, where A C equivalent is the equivalent R M S current. So, it will be root 2 into I A C equivalent, this is your I max. 3 by 2 this one and this strength I equate to this strength that is equal to 2 n i d c into root 3 by 2 2 2 cancels n n cancels. From where I will get i a c equivalent which would have produced same strength of the field as the DC current is producing if the AC current RMS value is like this that is root 3 by root 2 root 3 by root 2 into 2 by 3 which is equal to root 2 by 3 into I D C. So, what is the conclusion? Conclusion is this DC current is there. See, these are very nice things, it will further strengthen your idea of three phase induction machine. Some field is there which is stationary, rotor was moving. This thing is equivalent to field is moving in the opposite direction, rotor is stationary. Now, this field it has been created by DC current, no doubt but I can always think it has been created by a balanced three phase winding that is balanced three phase winding means this stator. Now, the question is to create this field what will be the AC current here that AC current is found out by equating the amplitude of this field amplitude of the field in case of three phase current is 3 by 2 n into I A C max here that is nothing but root 2 I A C equivalent this is the RMS value and this must be equal to this from which I get I A C equivalent to be root 2 by 3 I D C. In short you pass a DC current here I will say the this is same as to calculate the torque whatever it is you consider the rotors to be stationary there is a field here which is produced by some balanced three phase AC current whose RMS value is this and of frequency this that is important. Okay.
equivalent frequency and the machine is stationary. Therefore, I will be able to calculate the torque produced by this machine. Now, therefore, what will be the equivalent circuit? Equivalent circuit. Equivalent circuit will be stated impedance R1, there will be a magnetizing reactance X1, and there will be what is called X2 dashed, and there will be an R2 dashed by slip. Achha, what is the value of slip? We have noted it is equal to 1 because rotor is stationary. Therefore, it should be this by 1. X2 dashed is the standstill rotor leakage reactance per phase. when the in this equivalent circuit when the frequency is f is not standstill standstill rotor leakage reactance that is frequency 50 hertz that is the supply frequency but here the supply frequency is 1 minus s into f that is at frequency f I know x 2 dashed. So, this must be multiplied by 1 minus s now similarly x 1 is the frequency of the supply frequency f here but that frequency is now equivalent frequency is 1 minus s f. So, it must be multiplied by 1 minus s into f. Similarly, x m the magnetizing inductance it should be multiplied by 1 minus s this is an important step. And then I am telling this current RMS value of the current say I do not have any idea about the applied voltage it is also not necessary. I know this RMS current has to be this is I AC equivalent which I have found out to be root 2 by 3 into I D C. Now, to calculate the torque what all I have to calculate is the power here air gap power of this equivalent machine and what will be the magnitude of this equivalent I, I know the RMS current here therefore, this current square e, if I call this current is some I. So, that breaking torque will be this air gap power in synchronous watt it will be 3 I square R 2 dashed that is all. Now, what is this value of I? this is a RMS current which is divided into two parallel branches. Therefore, magnitude of the current I in terms of this will be simply that parallel rule of impedances. So, this current into x m divided by these two impedances. So, it will be 3 I A C equivalent squared into this reactance X m into 1 minus S. I, I first write down uh, this is ok this is understood. Now, what I am telling is this I is equal to let us not make it whole square this that I will be equal to the total current I S equivalent RMS 
into this reactance x n into 1 minus s divided by sum of these two impedances their magnitude. So, that will be equal to under root this plus this this whole thing it will be equal to r 2 dash squared plus if I make a mistake you point out x n plus x 2 dash into 1 minus s this whole square correct. So, this is how I will be able to calculate this i, I will put it here get the torque got the point. So, breaking torque in DC dynamic breaking the stator is disconnected when it is running as a motor nicely from a three phase supply and you wish to bring the machine to a quick stop what you do you switch over from AC supply to DC supply with the help of some switching on the stator side rotor side you do not do anything therefore, rotor speed uh, if it is n r and initial slip at which it was running was governed by this f was this supply frequency. Now, there is DC no supply frequency no AC, but you know it is a stationary field now the moment DC current flows and stationary field motor is also running. So, you imagine rotor is stationary from this you come here from this diagram. Then rotor is uh, stationary now give the speed to the stator field in the opposite direction whatever the rotor ex will experience torque is same as this fellow nothing new in that. Therefore, based on that I have to calculate the torque, but now this rotating field is in reality it is not there, but we have translated this problem from stationary field moving rotor to a stationary rotor and a moving field and any moving field I can always think of it is uh, uh, developed by a balanced three phase current. So, I will assume that this rotating field is developed by the same three phase supply of frequency f. Hmm? of frequency f no of frequency because the speed of the rotating field is known. So, I will say the frequency of that three phase supply must be p n r by 2. If that be the case in terms of original supply frequency f and slip this f e becomes 1 minus s into f and then uh, uh, I have to calculate the torque of the machine mind you it is its rotor is stationary this is the equivalent equivalent thing of this one. We only wish to calculate the torque how much it will be produced now the question is then how to calculate the torque you can calculate the torque the strength of this field if you assume it has been developed by a balanced three phase AC current of RMS value AC equivalent then 3 by 2 into n into the peak value of the AC current that will be this that you equate to this and the I AC equivalent current is known. And once it is known then I will say that ok the per phase equivalent circuit about voltage I am not making any comments what kind of voltage is necessary I will be able to now tell how, how much is the per phase applied voltage by because I know the currents I know the parameters I will be able to calculate the voltage drop. Now, uh, here only thing is this R 1 x 1 this into x 1 x 1 is the mind you in the equivalent circuit x 1 is the leakage reactance of this stator at frequency f. What is x 2 dashed? x 2 dashed is the leakage reactance of the rotor at standstill condition that is at frequency f original this thing 
Therefore, now I am telling whatever is this supply, its frequency is 1 minus s into f. Therefore, these reactances are to be modified by multiplying with this 1 minus s into f or 1 minus s only, no f here, is not it will be reduced by a factor. Yeah, no f here, please. Uh, so, uh, 1 minus s into x and this one. Similarly, it is x m into 1 minus s. Then I know the equivalent S R M S current and torque is absolutely uh, depends on the air gap power. At this machine it is stationary that modified value of this leap is 1 and then you calculate this i how to calculate use the series parallel rule and then put it here to get the torque. Now, from AC to DC supply connections only it is a comment I will not go into details because these are not. See I, I have shown it like this, this was the stator connection original is not original this is the stator connection your supply is three phase AC. Then I told you switch over to DC, connect it like this plus minus DC. You could also connect a DC source from this to this in several other ways, there are several options. For example, you could join this to get a DC current, are you getting? There are many options are there by which you can create a stationary magnetic field. If you do differently, what thing will change is this AC equivalent circuit, because you have to then sketch what is the MMF resultant MMF because of this current and equivalent current will be available. Therefore, you inject some DC current and get the breaking torque. Okay. Anyway, think about it. These are exercises if you go through, I am once again telling it will further make you much more comfortable with rotating magnetic field and things like that and how intelligently it can be applied in various situations. Okay. So, this is the thing. Now, another method is called of breaking is called regenerative breaking. Here also I will give you the idea regenerative breaking. Recall uh, in my last class while doing plugging I told you the torque slip characteristics this is s equal to 1 is necessary that motor may sometimes go to breaking zone, plugging slip may be 2 minus s and you have to calculate the torque here. But for DC dynamic braking since 1 minus s is coming you should not <laughs> take this torque and say that is the torque, no, because after all that is not AC supply. In plugging in both the situation it was AC supply, you have only changed the phase sequence, but anyway this was the torque slip characteristics over the range s equal to 0 to 2. Achha, in regenerative braking what is done is this, this machine is made to run as a induction generator that is slip becomes negative. Okay. Now, the question is, is it possible? At least one instance I, I will ask you to think in this way. See, slip was equal to N s minus N r by N s and I told you in general operation N r at best could be highest value of N r as motor operation, motoring. N r is equal to N s that is all and when N r equal to N s 
there is no rotor induced voltage, no rotor current, no torque is developed that is this point that is N s. Now, suppose with the help of machine is running under no load condition. So, uh, what I am telling this is this it is connected to your three phase bus supply A, B, C three phase supply and here is your rotor. Okay. Now, and NR it is running and this is F s N s it is going like this. Now, suppose machine is running under no load and you, you imagine on this shaft I have also a prime mover okay, may be a DC motor is connected. This stator connected to the bus and this DC machine speed I will go on increasing and it may so happen N R will become equal to N S and then if you further increase the rotor speed N R, N R will become greater than N S, but as, as a motor it cannot do so unless there is a external source external prime mover which is making its speed more than the synchronous speed. If you do like that, if if you somehow make N R greater than N S, then then slip will become negative. Slip becomes negative. Therefore, that air gap resistance becomes minus R 2 by S negative resistance indicating that it will not consume power. It will I mean difficult to understand, but anyway uh, if you the, this uh, same equivalent circuit should prevail why not there is a relative speed there is induced voltage in the rotor there is current only thing slip becomes negative. What I am telling is if you connect an watt meter here say to demonstrate this connect two watt meters W 1 W 2 to measure the power you will find when N R is less than N S normal motoring operation W 1 plus W 2 is positive, but if you somehow make rotor speed greater than the synchronous speed n s then you will see the sum of the watt meter readings are becoming negative indicating that power is now flowing from this machine to the bus this is bus three phase bus. Power will be flown back to the machine. So, if N R is equal to N S then we and the machine is connected to the bus mind you this point is important it is not a generator in isolation you connect it and then if you want to operate it as a motor then what you do you have a suppose DC motor prime mover so that we can easily understand and then after connecting it if I want to make this induction motor act as a generator and feed power to the bus there must be a prime mover a generator without a prime mover cannot sustain. So, so this uh, uh, prime mover speed if I make greater than N R greater than N S then electrical power will be pumped into the three phase bus where from that power will come from the prime mover DC motor it will take power from the DC bus make that DC machine run as a motor and power will be fed back to the generator. So, this kind of operation then must be called DC I mean generator operation it I have not talked about breaking what I am telling simply 
that by any chance if n r becomes greater than n s then motor will become a, a will go to generator mode and if it goes to generator mode electromagnetic torque must oppose the prime mover torque is not that is the idea. Now, you imagine this situation suppose you have a vehicle traction it is moving like this suppose it is supplied from a three phase supply ok in single line I am drawing it is three phase supply pantograph it goes a there there is an induction motor which is driving this fellow on a flat track. Well, the speed of this machine rotor speed hence the this speed cannot be greater than synchronous speed rotor speed cannot be greater than synchronous speed. Now, suppose uh, this track has a got a downhill. So, uh, th this fellow comes here vehicle your this is the three phase overhead line it comes like this it comes a down slope what is going to happen now gravity will assist it will try to accelerate it is not and its speed rotor speed of this thing which is ultimately connected to the shaft of this induction motor will make n r greater than n s and then the power flow will be from the motor to this supply lines and this is called regenerative braking it is very good because it if it goes there somebody is there to create an opposite force to counter gravity imagine there is no regenerative braking torque it would have accelerated and finally it will meet with an accident perhaps so it is inherent anyway thank you we will continue with this you think in this term